with the little experience I have as a barrister, I get to understand the term testing as something we get to feel and perceive on our palates after eating or drinking something to determine its result. That's right. In today's video, I have decided to respond to one of the most asked questions, which goes by what is the best way to test coffee? With the little answers I tried to gather around, at the end of this video, I'll be telling you which is the most simplest way to test and understand the coffee that you are trying to deal with. So, without wasting any minute, let's get started. One minute look at this question as a very simple question to respond to. But remember, many competitions are being held between baristas, roasters, quality controllers, and farmers to find the best coffee. And remember, to get the perfect results, every coffee is tested in a different so, way. As a barrister, I try to note down the different steps through which you can easily get to understand coffee. Remember, coffee comes from different places and different gardens. Let's say coffee comes from Uganda. We have Kapchora, we have Gulu, we have Kampala, we have Masaka, we have Bunyoro, we have Mbale. All these places can grow coffee, but the land attributes to the taste and flavors of this coffee. That's why you are going to find that same coffee from one country, different tests. And by the way, happy independence to my fellow Ugandans. So as we go on, coffee is tested right from the garden to the consumer. However much the consumer is buying a cup of coffee to drink, that consumer is really going to test that coffee. That's why you are going to find out that the consumer is going to tell you that this coffee is really nice or this coffee is lacking something. So we call, we also call that testing. So when it comes to testing, what are the attributes or what are the factors that we are looking for when we are trying to test coffee? There are those major factors. Let's look at the tests. With the tests, we are going to look for the sweetness, bitterness, aftertaste, and sourness when it comes to the testing. Then we go to the body. Is it heavy, light, or medium? Then it comes to the flavor stroke. Get to test that coffee. When you get to drink that coffee, what do you feel to perceive out? What are those flavors that you are getting from your coffee? Is it dark chocolate, caramel, white chocolate, and many other flavors. Remember. Then it comes to the aromas and fragrances. When you get to smell your coffee, what are you achieving? Remember the scent also sends a sense to your brain that we are going to attain something after testing this coffee. So after getting to know what you're going to look for within this coffee, it pushes us direct to the different techniques and the methods through which we are going to brew or extract the coffee. We have the extraction, the immersion, the pour over, the drip method, the capsule method, and the cold brew method. All these categories still attain different techniques or those apparatuses through which we are supposed to use to brew and extract this coffee. So, like when it comes to the extraction, we have an espresso machine. Extraction basically means use of force to brew or to get that con clicker that we are trying to do what we are trying to get. But remember, even an espresso is going to give you the things that we look for within the coffee. It's going to give you the body, it's going to give you the flavors, it's going to give you the tests. Every time you get to drink this coffee, it attains something through the extraction process. When it comes to the immersion, you are going to find yourself using the plunger, commonly known as the French press, then you are going to find yourself still using the Euro press. I'm just going to give you different examples. And when it comes to the pour over, you're going to find yourself using the Kali V60 and the Chemix Extra, Extra. And when it comes to cold brew, call it the slow immersion process. Or sometimes it depends with the apparatus that you use. So that's how broad it gets to be. We have looked at the determinants or the things that we are supposed to look at while we are drinking coffee. We have looked at the tests, the body, the aroma. Those are the first major factors that we are supposed to look at. Then it comes the processes that we are going to use while we are testing the same coffee that we are looking for. Remember, you are looking for the perfect test out of that coffee that you have in your hands. Then it leads us to what apparatuses that we are going to use while we are testing coffee. Then let's get to know something. Immediately coffee is roasted, given a period of time to degas, and after degassing, tested through cupping. Every roaster cups his coffee to determine yeah. coffee profiles after testing that coffee. So every time they get to cup, still they are looking for the body, body. the test, the aroma, stroke, fragrances within that coffee. So remember, that is also another kind of testing coffee. So that is the number one recommended coffee protocol every person has to follow. Even if you're a barista and you've just received your coffee right from, from the roastery, please make it a point to cup that coffee. However much. And this is the best part on how I get to test coffee. Like you see these beans, they are direct from my roastery. And 
Most of you are going to expect me to first cup this coffee, but that is really wrong. That's not what I do as a barista. I borrowed this technique right from the ancient days of my great-grandfather, whereby I used to see them making this practice before they go to brew their coffee. Still, this technique is used in my country as a culture way of brotherhood. In my language, we call it Mozanganda, whereby they get the coffee beans and share it evenly within the visitors, especially men. After receiving the coffee beans, this is what they used to do. They get the coffee beans into their hands. Sometimes they used to throw them onto a clean white sheet or a white table. Then they get to sort them. They get to see or they get to understand what type of coffee beans they are dealing with. First, when you look at this coffee bean, you get to understand which process it was made. Was it a washed process? Was it a honey process? Or it is a naturally processed coffee? Then they get to look at the size of the coffee beans. This gives them a glimpse of what country and what farm was this coffee made. Sometimes we might not have the experience to see that, but our ancient grand great parents to do this, to determine which garden produced this coffee. Then they get to hold the coffee beans, smell them. After smelling these coffee beans, it gives you the right pinch into your mind through these nostrils to understand which fragrance you are going to attain. The next step after getting to sense, they hold their coffee beans and throw them into their mouth. So when they throw it into their mouth, they get to chew these coffee beans. When you get to chew, it gives you still the direct aroma through your nostrils. Wow, I love this. Then, whenever I get to chew these coffee beans, I get to feel the level of the acidity. Is it high? Is it low? Is it medium? Then I get to feel, every time I swallow, I get to understand the aftertaste. What am I going to receive every time I get to drink the brood or extracted liquor? After understanding that, still I can feel the body. The most thing that I like about chewing these coffee beans is it gives me the right density of the coffee. It's like when you get to chew freshly roasted popcorns and aerated popcorns. You can feel the difference. With the fresh, they have a light density. With the, with the aerated ones, it has a very heavy density. So every time I chew this, it gives me the feel of what the grinder is going to go through every time I do what? I chew these coffee beans. Now, these coffee beans have a medium density. Their body is not all that heavy, neither is it very light so i get to understand the adjustment of the what of the grinder either i take it to the fine or to the coarse side of the grinder that is why i love testing my coffee beans because it's the first process as i a barista use while i'm testing that coffee try it out if you're a barista and you'll give me the results through the comment section and just in case you are contemplating with this method feel free to reach me my tiktok instagram facebook pages which are at bar which are at Barista Andrea. And just in case you're new to this channel, make it a point to subscribe because no barista is going to give you a video like this one because most of we baristas love to be confidential with our skills. But I decided to simplify coffee with the you viewer. All right, see you in another video. Love you.